But oh, I lived near the ocean. I lived near Long Island, New York, and nothing is more fierce than a big storm. Men, them waves come in, they go up high, and they bang to the ground. I mean, that's, that's how them storms, they weren't just smooth little things. We, we had our good times, but when the hurricane uh, would come about, we had to contend with these terrible storms that didn't care if it pulled the roof off. It didn't care if it caused damage to anything because that's what intentions were. But I thank God that I got a God that promised me that he would be me to the very end. Yeah. He would never leave me alone. Right. Yeah. Right. And, I, and he promised me that. And I woke when, when Brother Manny passed away and I had to lay in that bed alone. I said, God, I don't know if I can take this or not. I don't even think I want to get out of bed, but a voice said to me, I'm going to take you, take good care of you to the very end. Amen. And I said, Jesus, I know that Jesus is always yeah. doing this. Sat on the edge of my bed, feet hanging down, here I go. And I've been facing it ever since. Uh -huh. And do you know what? You find out you can make it. Amen. You can make it, can't you, kids, people, everybody. It's, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 I got a dear little girl sitting here next to me. Her name's Sheila. Jones, and she's, I've known the family for a long time, and her mother was in the churches that we, I attended back, way back time, <coughs> and, uh, but he kept his hand on Sheila, and he brought her to this body of people, Amen. and she's right here <coughs> being with me, she's babysitting me, my husband, my, uh, uh, my family took off and left me all alone, oh. <laughs> just me and Sheila. <laughs> We're the kind of food we can find to eat. <laughs> but you know, you do the best. The main cook's gone, so I, I haven't cooked for so long. I said, oh, I don't know, just having to cook for somebody. <laughs> so I pick on the frozen stuff <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, it's still good. It's yeah. still, uh, you look at, we have few. So what? The, 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 uh, God loves the, the, the people that are that, uh, he loves you. He loves all of us, but he, he, he honors the people that are faithful. That's his jewel. He can look down and know that we'll be here. We'll be there. And take this worry. Brother Jared's wondering how things are going along. He didn't have to worry. And he knows there's some people that will hang in there. And anyway, but I just want to tell you that uh, I love the Lord with all my heart. Well, how much heart I got, I don't know. But <coughs> I had bad surgery because <laughs> I took some hot lips. Uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's just amazing how God has kept his hand on me. If you ever take time to look at yourself, look, was it you or somebody said, look at yourself? Or somebody said that. Look at yourself. I did. Oh, well, <laughs> I looked at myself and it was terrible. <laughs> so I seen some correct corrections to make. <coughs> Let's, uh, this little, little group of people, that's nothing. I've seen churches full and full and full and full that didn't mean much. They didn't feel much. It failed a lot of people around. <coughs> but thank God that God is real. Yeah. Uh, that's the promise that keeps me going. I know that God is real. Right. <coughs> so I thought I'd get up and encourage you all to get up and testify and let Sheila know that there are people that love the Lord, that really love the Lord, and she is blessed to be with us. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> I'm blessed that the, that she's with me. So uh, uh, the only thing I can say is you never sit down and shut up. <laughs> but who is you sit down with that? He said when you stumble around and you bubble around and you don't know what you're saying, just sit down and shut up. <laughs> I said, thanks a lot, Brother Boyce. <laughs> that really encourages me. My mouth has to go all the time. You know? <laughs> and and when, uh, he'd tell us to sit down and shut up. Uh, it, there's something he said that happened that was so... <coughs> he loved to pick on me because I knew he could take it. You know, and he'd pick on me. Maybe it was terrible. <laughs> and I just laughed and repeated laugh. Finally, he stopped <coughs> laughing. But he was a fine man. And he got us started in what we're doing today. He left behind Illinois and all that out there to come and start 
something like this. And you gave his life for it. It's down in Bristol, right, Tom? Huh? The brother boy he started in Bristol. Yeah. He started yeah. the church in Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. So because he was waiting for me. He knew if he didn't hurry and get done. <laughs> you know, he'd miss that little Yankee. But anyway, so um and I wanna compliment you then on the piano. You're putting your all into it and you know just how to pick the right tune. <laughs> and uh uh, she's very, in, in, in dear little lady, of course, we know she's the best. The little lady is the best. What a wrong man with wrong beats. <laughs> she can sing. She's got a beautiful voice. So Brother Jared has got some quality things to have arranged to help her for sure. And I'm glad I'm part of it. And Jeanette, sit down. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 
I can say yes. I can say yes. Amen. I found him whom my soul loved. Because when I came through these doors, I don't know what it's been, about three years ago now, uh, my wife and I had basically given up hope. We thought God was either done with us or something because we went through several places. We <laughs> couldn't really find who my soul loved. We could find a church, but to really find who my soul loved. That's something different. That's something that you can't even explain until you've experienced it. All you can do is just, when someone asks you, you just say, well, I, I pray to God that God will touch you someday. That God will touch your heart. Because you can find who your soul loves. And uh, in Psalms 127.1, the reason I hear a mic that you hold in your hand. I can't deal with all this stuff. Here in uh, Psalm 127.1 Except the Lord build the house they that labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city the watchman walketh but in vain. Except the Lord build a house Except the Lord build a house. Yeah. It's in vain. Right. There's, there's nothing that any of us can do. We can seek God. We can cry out to God. We can shout. We can sing. We can sing these songs like we did here tonight that were, that were so wonderful. But unless He's there, right. what's, what's the use? In Nehemiah uh, 1 and 3, and they said unto me, The remnant that was left of the captivity there in the providence are in the great are in great affliction and reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates therein are burned with fire. And people can say what they want, people can talk all they want, but this has been the condition that we have found ourselves in in the last few years. The walls of Jerusalem have been broken down. The gates have been burned up. And without the Lord keeping the city, without the Lord keeping the city, <coughs> doors would be tore down, never to be rebuilt. In 1 and 8 and 9, Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou that, that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Yeah. I, I don't think I have to even comment on mine. You've been scattered unto the uttermost parts of the heaven. Yet will I gather them from thence. I will bring them unto this place that I have chosen to set my name there. This is this is a, a prophecy, really. It's telling what happened, why the Jerusalem was destroyed, but what could happen if if a people would really start turning back to God. If a people would really stop and consider, stop and consider and do his word. If you transgress, I will scatter you abroad. Haven't we seen that? Yeah. Haven't the, the people of God been scattered? Yeah. This nation is in such a <clears throat> is in such a mess right now. Our, our uh, the leadership, and we could say on both sides, 
they, they don't even understand that uh, we're to hold up leadership. Right. No matter whether you agree or not, it's not to tear down that leadership. Right. It's to stand with and to pray <coughs> and to pray over that leadership. Yeah. But they they are seeking to destroy each other, and that's what they're doing. They're destroying each other. They're destroying this country. This country has turned away from God, yeah. and because of that, we have, well, because of that, we have the leadership that we do, and it's a sad thing, and it's something that we all need to be concerned about, because we need to understand the time does draw now. The time is getting shorter. The lines are being drawn. Here in <coughs> Nehemiah 2, and verse 18. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. This was Nehemiah telling them what God had spoken to his heart about. He was actually just saying, God told me he's with me. And we have a pastor that's telling us God is with us. And I believe that. I see that. Uh, I don't know if all of you, uh, I don't get on Facebook very often, but my wife told me about the pastor uh, texting back that the pastor was invited to a church in Pakistan that has 20,000 members in it. This, this little assembly, <coughs> we, we don't always see the, the, the big picture. Uh, this, this little home group here, he was, he was talking on this text how testimonies like Sister Leslie's testimony Sunday night is affecting somebody halfway around the world. We don't we don't always see that. We we, we get so close to the, our, ourselves and our own personal issues in life, our own personal problems that we fail to really see the big picture. We fail to see how God is working. You see, many times. Uh, this this book is the highlights that's written for thousands of years. Uh, many things happened. Many people suffered. Many people worked. Many people did without. That you don't read about in this book. That you don't even you don't even hear about. Even even the highlights. It's just the highlights. There was a whole lot of suffering went on for 400 years. For 400 years, the children of Israel there. All we hear is that they were slaves. All we hear is that, you know, they were under the judgment of God. But we don't hear about all the background that was going on. There was a remnant that left captivity that are the afflicted and the reproached. This is in Nehemiah 1.3. Did I give you that one already? I think I did. Let's move on to uh, let's move on to Nehemiah 4.10. Sorry, I'm not preaching to you like a pastor, Brother Brian. That's not my. I told you the other night. Uh, that's just not me. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna attempt it. Uh, so I'm just gonna talk to you. What's on my heart? I, when I came to this church, I said all I have to offer is my heart. I, I don't. I don't have anything else but that. So this is what I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna try to give you. What's on? What's on my heart? And I hope. I hope you get something out of it. I hope I'm. I'm boring you to death here tonight. I know your time's valuable. And, uh, but here, uh, 410, 
and the strength of the bears of the burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall and it, at times uh, there's been so much rubbish that's around the, the foundation see the pastor said the foundation that we're on is, there's nothing wrong with it it's a good foundation it's a solid foundation yeah. it's something that we can build on yeah. but sometimes there's so much rubbish yes, sir. around the foundation right. that we haven't even been able to get to the to the wall to build it yeah. we're, we're still we're still trying to clear away the rubbish right. you see what i'm saying yes, sir. there's so much uh, so much uh, battles here so many things that we're having to clear out and to clean up and the, and when you do a, I, I was in construction, and when you do a remodel job, sometimes there's more to the cleanup and the clearing out than there is to the to the building. You could build a new new building easier than sometimes than you can remodel a building because you have to tear out the old. Yeah. You have to get rid of the rubbish, yeah. and then you have to bring in the the, the new things. So. This is, this is something that the, the church has been battling. Uh, the church has been fighting. The people of God, uh, sometimes we, we even get, get caught up in that rubbish. We stumble over that rubbish. We, we go down and, you know, maybe you twist an ankle or something. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you, you just get caught up in the rubbish instead of getting to the foundation. This is where God wants us, this building on that foundation. And but the people had a mind to work. And I think we have a group here that's set. And we have a mind to work. Many people uh, they're not so interested in working. They're interested in, uh, as in Nehemiah's day, they just want to tear down. They want to make fun. Uh, they want to throw off. But it's, it's few people that really want to work for God. Amen. That's willing. I, I, was, I was kind of reviewing some of this today. These people woke from, worked from daylight to dark. They worked from the rising of the sun to the going down in the sand. Uh, this was not an easy work. I, I've, uh, these walls were stone. And this was, this was uh, a, a hard work. I don't know if you can see it, but I worked as a mason. I've got two broken fingers. One's kind of twisted in crooked and the other one's just crooked and it's a lot of it's because of the the work that I did this was the work that they were doing this was the work that they were engaging and this was not easy work this was not something you just go out there and uh, you know in our day and age they weren't sitting behind a computer I'm not saying that that's not hard please <laughs> don't throw any stones up here but I'm just saying, they weren't sitting at a computer and an air conditioning office. They were laboring. They were laboring. And the whole time, people were making fun. People were coming against them. The work of God, many times, is not glamorous. You know, it sounds... Uh, we talk about building the wall, you know, and... and you know, you talk about, oh, all these things. It sounds wonderful, you know. Oh, they went and built the wall. And all of a sudden, you know, they had this wonderful thing. Jerusalem was restored. But we forget about those things that people were out there carrying stones. People were lifting stones. People were mixing mortar, if you would, and putting it in there. It was not glamorous work. And many times the work of the Lord is not glamorous. It is difficult. It is a putting the shoulder to the plow right. and the moving forward, even though we don't feel like it sometimes. 
We don't know if Sister Jeanette says, you might not even feel like getting out of bed. How do you think those slaves felt? How do you think those people building that wall that worked from daylight till dark, they were feeling that same way, Sister Manning. And Brother Manning has said, the work of the Lord is in the mundane much of the time. And you know, it's, it's, uh, it's glorious to have a, a meeting like we just have and people come together and you know, you get to see maybe old friends, and make some new friends. Uh, Cheryl and I made two new friends that stayed in our home. We, we really enjoyed those two brothers that stayed in our home. You know, that's, that's the glamorous part. You know, you, you come in here and you saw people falling on the altar. You saw people running around the church. Uh, many people were encouraged. That's the glamorous part. But what about the part coming in on a Wednesday night? Right. Or maybe a Sunday night, Brother Kaplan, right. when there's no, no praise team here. <laughs> and the microphone's cutting out. And <laughs> we were balancing things. But that's, that's the part when it's not so glamorous that Brother Kaplan stood here. My wife said she kept a smile the whole time. I would have been. <laughs> but Brother Calvin was standing there, even when it wasn't so glamorous. He was standing there doing the work of the Lord when it was a little mundane. When he was battling it. When he was, you know, when Brother Calvin comes in here, maybe he wasn't even feeling well. You know, many times I can, I've got to know Brother Calvin a little bit. I can almost tell how he's feeling. When he walks in the door, when you see his face, sometimes you, you say, "How are you doing?" Like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good, but you can see the pain on his face. But the Lord Calvin was here. He was he was fighting through that. He was working in the mundane part. Uh, let's go to Nehemiah three. I think I'm backtracking here a little bit, but that's all right. <laughs> this is this is giving the the order of them that built the wall. This is part of our Bible, so it was it was important that they listed those individuals that built the Bible. I mean, built the built the wall. But I want you to go to verse fourteen here. I want to show you a little something. This isn't the glamorous part. But the dumb gate, I don't think I have to explain that, re repaired Malachi, the son of Rika, the ruler of part of, somebody help me with that. He built it, he set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. This was the part of the wall Maybe wasn't very glamorous. Maybe uh, maybe we we might have said, well, I, don't, I don't want to do that part of the wall. Can I can I be over here on the over here on the sunny side of the on the wall? Can I be doing a little something else? But how important was it that in our Bible they tell us who built the dung wall? Here was, a, here was a man that wasn't too proud. He wasn't too uh, exalted. But they gave him the dung wall to build. He built it. He built it. He was happy to build it. And his name is recorded. His name is recorded in the Bible. So you think it was important to God? I think it was. I think it was. This was a part of the, of the wall that could have went un, unbuilt. So everybody could have said, oh, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But he was happy to build it. So even though the work of the Lord is not always glamorous, and it is a burden at times, and it is a fight at times, okay. Brother Manning told us, that the news of the wall being built 
is reaching out to places like Pakistan, like India, like Kenya, like Uganda, like Zimbabwe. These are, you wouldn't think it, but this little assembly here was having an effect that far away around the world. Mr. Leslie, that testimony you gave Sunday night reached around the world. You just know it. And it helped people. It touched our hearts in here. It, it lifted this assembly. You know it's lifting other people because of her testimony. That was powerful testimony. That's something that I'm sure she was uh, she was burying her heart. But many times it's testimonies like that that does more for somebody that's around the world that's struggling. You know, uh, it's 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 wonderful to hear about the victories and uh, and uh, see people running around the church and jumping up and down and stuff. But testimonies like that, where you hear how somebody's struggling, and yet they're taking it one step closer. They might be steps like Brother Calvin takes. They're a little harder. They're a little bit slow. They're a little bit short. But people hear that. They're hearing that around the world. We. We, uh, <coughs> there has been some battles around here. There has been some burdens to carry around here. But that has also went around the world. People are also hearing about that. They're hearing about the rubbish being cleared away. Amen. They're hearing about all of the junk being cleared away. Yeah. That we can see that foundation. Yes. Yeah. And that the man of God is building on that foundation. Uh, out of the word of God. Uh, I wasn't really planning on this, but Cheryl and I uh, had, had a uh, insurance agent in our home. And him and his wife came in to, uh, we were to talk to them about some insurance for the, the church. And uh, it was so amazing. I, I, I thought, what's it he come in, he introduced his wife, and I just kind of thought, well, what's he bring his wife for? You know, I said, this is just going to be an insurance thing. But, you know, about two and a half hours later, we talked about insurance about 10 minutes. And we talked about the Lord for the rest of the time. And from that, we, um, we understand that there's hungry hearts out there. This was a Pentecostal couple. And they're trying to serve God at the best of their ability. And we were able to talk to them some and we're going to try to get them to come to church here before long. But they, they told of the burden that they had. They told how they were burned out, really. That they were, you know, they were feeling uh, I think, I think Without saying it, they felt all alone. They felt all alone because they were trying to serve God, and I think they were just getting so much resistance everywhere. They said there was a man in their assembly. They have a, a small church, and they said a man in their assembly was fighting them over doctrine. And it was so sad that he said, the man was saying that, well, we, we shouldn't even be talking about doctrine. And I said, well, I said, uh, our pastor says doctrine is just instruction of the word of God. Isn't that true? Said, well, yeah, I guess it is true. <laughs> you know? So we were able to witness to it. And this, this foundation of the doctrine, people don't want to talk about it, but without it, <laughs> Why do we even have this book? Why do we even why do we even talk about sin for that matter? Because the only way we know what sin is is by this book. 
because somebody told me one time that you can't live that way. I appreciate coming into a church. I appreciate coming into a church that was different, that told me you can't live that way and serve God. Serving God is different than just going and doing whatever you want. That's not serving God. That's just professing Christ. And the scripture that I forgot that Brother Calvin uh, quoted there the other night was many people on that day uh, still, still crying and saying, Lord, Lord, haven't we done many wonderful works? But the Lord is going to say, I never knew you. Now that's a scary, that's a scary thing. We, we, uh, we should examine ourselves daily. He that thinketh he, he stands, he might find out he standeth not. So we, we, we have a, a pastor here that's helping us. Say, let's go to work on the wall. Yeah. Let's, in, in, a, in a stone wall like they built in Jerusalem there, you just build one stone on top of the other. Yeah. One stone on top of the other. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a little here, there, a little, yeah. there, a little. And that's all we can do. We, I said the other night, and I hope, and I said, I hope nobody takes this wrong. We don't even know where we're going. The pastor said, we've went around the mountain long enough. We need to move northward. That's not a place. That's a direction. And all we can do is trust the Lord. All we can do is say, Lord, I see the fire at night. I see the cloud at day. Let us follow that. Let us follow that. Because that's the only way. That's the only way we're ever going to get to where to where we all are desiring to be is if we keep following the Lord. If we can't follow the Lord, if we can't see that cloud, go somewhere where you can see the cloud. If you can't see that fire, find some place where you can see that fire. Because without it, there just isn't no hope. Uh, As I said, Sister Leslie, the testimony you give Sunday night you're right, Sister Opal. Wow. It, it, it shows uh, there's something about a truthful testimony. Someone that really bears their heart. Yeah. Yeah. That touches a child of God. Yes, yes. And, and uh, I wasn't a, I'm still not a big fan of the live streaming, but yet. It's necessary because of that testimony. Yeah. And these people around the world, Pakistan, Kenya, uh, Cheryl and I was in Kenya. Uh, they're a pretty, uh, pretty prosperous country for Africa, but yet there are still people there that are, uh, there's still people there that are very hungry on you know, all through the country. But more importantly, they're hungry for the Word of God. Amen. There's something in some of these countries that we've lost or are losing in this country. We have we have so much. Uh, if, if you get sick, you go to the doctor. Somebody in these countries might not have that option. Even if they had the money, they might not have that option. So what do they do? They seek God. See, prosperity is 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 all right, but we should we should we should be worried about prosperity. I I question God many times. You know, uh, we live comfortably. We're not rich by any means, but you can get so you don't have to depend on God for anything. You just, you just even even the poor in our country, if, if they get hungry, they go down the soup kitchen, something like that. They're, they're just, back in uh, back in the Depression days, people had to pray. People had to pray for food. They had to pray for anything. We had a I'm getting way off here what I was planning on talking about, but we had a sister in our assembly in Des Moines, Sister Mercer. 
And uh, she was a little gray-haired lady that had the had her hair all up, you know, and was always very uh, neat and tidy. I mean, just well, you know, you know the type. Just you know, when you saw her, you just knew she was going to look the same as she did last time. I mean, just she had that beautiful white hair, and she was. Uh, you remember? She was very, uh, very sweet lady. I mean, just as sweet as can be. And but she was, she towards the end of her life, she was getting kind of feeble, and her voice kind of cracked, and it was kind of weak. But uh, I don't know. Every once in a while, she would get up and give a testimony, and you knew it was, you knew it was fact. Because this little gray-haired lady, when she started giving this testimony, she was stooped a little bit, her voice was weak. But when she started giving that testimony, she started straightening up. Yeah. And the power of God would come on her. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And you could just you could just feel it building. Mm-hmm. And this little gray-haired lady talked about when she was uh, young, she was a single mother. And that... Uh, she was working uh, as much as she could, and she got down to where she was just, she was desperate. She didn't have any food. And she said she began to pray. She had two sons, and uh, she began to pray, seek God. You know, she said, I was just to a place I just needed help. And she said, I, I started getting a little bit louder. And when she was in her testimony, she, like I said, she started to straighten up. And she started to get a little louder. And she said, I was getting so loud that I knew I didn't want to wake my boys. I didn't want them worrying about not having any food to serve them. And she said, so I, she said, as I began to pray, she said, I just walked out the door. And she said, as I walked out the door, a chicken fell at my feet. Wow. And you could hear that in her voice. You knew it was true. Yeah. You knew it wasn't a story that she had just dreamed right. up right. to impress somebody. But she said she had prayed to God. Yeah. And she said, I just got out the door. She said, it wasn't a chicken running around the yard somewhere. She said, it fell at my feet. Where it come from? She said, I know. Mm-hmm. She said, I prayed to the God in heaven. Yeah. And he supplied that need. But like I said, I'm kind of getting up right here, but God many times as I said the other night we, we just need to pray through. Amen. It's a term that's lost. Amen. It's a term that uh, and, and I, I'm guilty. I'm not I'm not I'm preaching myself here. So a lot of this stuff it's, it's because God has put it on my heart. Many times in our our situations, we fail so miserably to go to this book, to go to these, to go to our needs, and begin to pray, and begin to pray, and stay on those needs. And stay on those knees. And stay on those knees. If you've got the Holy Ghost, something will start to start to build. And when we don't even know what we need to pray for, when we don't even know what we need to pray for at times, that Holy Ghost will become alive. And you'll begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance, and something will happen right there on your knees. Something will take place, and an answer will come. Maybe not right then. I prayed for a lot of things. Sister Annette got me on this one. I said, I prayed for things and never got the answer. She said, well, you got the answer. God said no. (laughs) (laughs) But a lot of things, we're just not serious with God. We're just not serious with God. 
Because we know even, even in the, the prayer of a little child, God hears that. Just about a little child, that evil little child praying. God hears that. But there's other times that he wants you to be serious. He wants you to really look to him. He wants you to be desperate for him. He wants you to be so desperate that you'll stay on those knees. Maybe you don't have time. Maybe you prayed for six, seven hours. Maybe not. But maybe go back the next night. Go back the next night. Go back the next night. That's what that's what the praying through really is. It's praying and praying and praying. And maybe you don't get an answer, but all of a sudden, that burden's lifted. That burden's lifted. And you know that you've touched you touch the hem of his garment. He hears. You touch the hem of his garment. When you have a, a a serious problem, touch the hem of his garment. Push through the crowd. Don't let anybody hold you back. That's what I appreciate about this church. There's no there's no one here looking over you. If you're You're desperate for God. You're desperate for an answer. No one looking over your shoulder. We're to share one another's burdens. We're to share one another's burdens. That's a that's a powerful thing in the church, isn't it? That's a powerful thing in the church. To share one another's burdens. If you can't tell, I felt your burden there. About your brother, I can't mind to see you because I felt that burden. I felt that burden many times. We feel the burden, but we fail to act. And, uh, I want to get more sensitive to that. Yes, Lord. This was this is completely off work. I want to be more sensitive to the Spirit. Amen. This church is such a powerful place, but we can get, we can, we can go farther. Amen. We can go deeper. Yes. We can become more sensitive. Yes. When the Spirit's moving, when the Spirit's moving us in a direction, let's be sensitive to that Spirit. Yes. If our brother or our sister has a need. God help us. God help us. There's been times that I've been desperate. Maybe I was too proud. Savior to help me. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just need a yeah. Yeah. need a touch. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just need a hand. Yeah. 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 I appreciate you. Yeah. 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 I appreciate you. This is something this, the church the true church has there's, there's many crowds out here. Uh, I heard it said you can build a crowd, but it's hard to build a church. You can build, you know, you can have a bunch of kids programs, draw all the kids in, and then the parents come in, and they think, oh, this is wonderful. And you can have all kinds of activities and different things. But to really have a church that cares, that really has a burden, one to another. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. 
that's that's my uh, that's my hope. That's my hope that I'll get more like Jesus. Amen. He went clear across the water, yeah. Lake of Galilee, to see one lunatic. Yep. Just to get one lunatic. I was that lunatic. Yes, sir. Maybe you all think I still am. <laughs> At one time, I was really a lunatic. Yes, I'll just say it that way. But Jesus yeah. went all the way across yeah. Galilee there to see that one lunatic. And then he turned around and came back. Isn't, isn't that the example that we have? Yeah. Isn't that the church that we all want? Yeah. I, I, I know it is. Yeah. I know it is. I, I know each one of us has that desire in our heart. Well, can we can we do more? I know I, know I can. I know I can. Uh, I know I can be more sensitive. I know I can be more willing to to follow after God. Just to uh, just to follow the example we have. None of us are even close to the example we we got. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm not close. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why I got on that, but I, I kind of appreciate it. I felt the spirit right there. I, I felt the spirit uh, touch me there, and I I hear the pastor say that. No, I know how it feels. The Lord just took me over there, and I appreciate it because I think it was something that need to be said maybe Amen. evidently maybe I need to say it to myself maybe I need to hear myself say that to come up higher to come up higher to do more to get under the burden and uh, the work of the Lord is not done by perfect people thank the Lord <laughs> it wouldn't be <laughs> thank the Lord the work is not done by perfect people or we wouldn't have a chance to work for the Lord. It is done by willing people striving to do the work of the Lord, all the while battling the sinful nature and the enemies of the work. Isn't that where isn't that where we find ourselves if we're if we're willing People striving to do the work of the Lord, all the while battling the sinful nature and the enemies of the work. There's there's a lot of people who can stand on the outside and and uh, say all kinds of things, uh, throw off, uh, castigate, do everything, but it doesn't matter. Us sinful people in here will keep. Moving forward, <coughs> one one step at a time. Yeah. Yes. Trying to serve God the best yeah. of our ability. Yeah. That doesn't mean we're perfect. That doesn't mean we're just saying, well, you can just sin and do whatever you want and, yeah. and still serve in the church. Yeah. But it means we're we're battling this flesh. We're yeah. we're oh, day after day after day we just we go to battle on this flesh. Yeah. Uh, Cyril can tell you, <laughs> last couple of days I've <laughs> been. Battling the flesh. <laughs> this is not easy uh, to stand up here and talk. It's not easy. Uh, I, I, you know, how many times have I not uh, got behind the burden that the pastor has? When, when I know he doesn't come in here feeling like standing up here either. I know it's his calling, but it's our calling too. We're children of God. I, I can't do I can't do what he does does uh, I can't do what Sister Opal does I can't do what Brother David or Sister Tammy does all I can do is what God has given me I, all I can do is I do it with a smile on my face because I still get the work on the wall. Oh, God. I still get to work on the wall. Yes. You know how 
You know how great that is? Yes. Mm -hmm. I get to work on the wall. Amen. A lot of people don't even understand that there's a wall being built. Right. A lot of people don't even understand that there's a, a foundation right. that's tried and true oh that we're trying to build on. Right. So let's let's truly let's truly work. Let's truly stand with the man of God. Whatever my part might be. Whatever whatever God lays on your heart. And each one of us has different skills, different abilities. Uh, let's get behind the work. Let's truly get behind the man of God. You know, he's... Uh, what I appreciate so much about Brother Manning... Said the other night, I've, I've been privileged to travel with him. We went to a large meeting here a while back, and uh, uh, what should I say here? The spirit moved. Um, well, I, I don't want to say anything despairingly, but we we left kind of uh, with our heads. Kind of hanging down a little bit because we went. We were hoping to uh, to really gain something, but after we left that meeting, we went to a little small church there in Kentucky, and there was uh, just a few people there. There's probably less than what there is here tonight. But you know, our pastor stood up. And you would have thought he was preaching to that crowd that he was in the night before. There was, I don't know, maybe 1,000, 1,500 people the night before. And there just wasn't a lot said. But as a pastor stood up in that little congregation and began to talk about the resurrection power, and it began to expound on how that we're looking for that city. Yes. Yes. We're looking yes. towards that city. Glory. And you know that, that little congregation, you could just feel them. You could feel their spirits begin to lift. Yes. You could feel that congregation begin to lift. So the pastor got up and danced behind the pulpit as Brother Manning was speaking. And you've heard him talk that he said, preach that at my funeral. Preach that at my funeral. But how, how, I told him later, I said, how sad it is that that large congregation didn't hear that. Right. Didn't hear that message on the resurrection. Right. That he, he wasn't able to lift that crowd and get behind the burden in that crowd. We, uh, I, I just, I just want to say again that Many times he comes in here, and he is, I know he's, he can't be that happy all the time. <laughs> he can't be that encouraged all the time. But he comes in here, you would never know it. Because he comes in here encouraging us, looking to lift us up. And now he's over on the other side of the continent. Sure, he's standing before some large crowds. Uh, Cheryl and I was in Kenya. There's probably 2,000 people in that assembly when we were there. And, uh, I think I've said before here, they wanted us to get up, and all I could do is stand there and ball. Uh, we, had, we had been a little part of those men. There were several men. We went into Brother Kibbe's home uh, after the meeting, and uh, several of those men had come to Des Moines and stayed there for a while. We had a little part in their ministry, and Cheryl and I left that meeting so encouraged because we had had such a little part, and yet those men remembered us. It was. Brother Rikubi, we sat, during this meeting, we sat right behind him. I, I, I'm not bragging about that. That's just where he set us. 
And after I got up and couldn't say anything other than just stand there and weep, as, as I looked out over at the congregation, Sister Ruth Tibby got up and she was gracious to explain to the congregation uh, that we had been uh, the people that helped take care of them. We were still all uh, the lady that helped serve them. We had cared for those men. That's basically all we did. We, a lot of times we drive around and different things. But we, we felt that you were a part of that ministry. Yeah. It was it was so uh, uplifting to us. Yeah. It so encouraged us. It, it encouraged us so much. When we came back to States, Cheryl and I knew we had to find some place that we could get to serve God. Yeah. Because we knew that was the only thing that made give us any happiness. Yeah. That gave us any joy, any peace for Thank serving you. God. So, uh, like I said, I didn't mean to say some of these things. I, I was just going to stand there for a little while, but let's let's get behind Brother Manning. When he returns home, he's going to be tired. Uh, the school will be starting before long. Uh, there's many activities. I'm sure he's going to come back here uh, supercharged. <laughs> He's going to come back here supercharged and he'll be all excited. But I know also he'll be, he'll be weary. It's, uh, Cheryl and I were on 12 flights when we went over there and it's just a weariness to your flesh when you come home. We're a little bit older than he is, but we were wore out. We, we had trouble just <laughs> getting up the next day. But uh, let's, let's stand with the word. Let's, let's work with Brother and Sister Manning. Let's do what we can. Let's get on the wall, find our little piece of foundation that the rubbish has been cleared off of, and let's begin to work. Amen. Tonight's, I think I told the last Friday, last Sunday night, that sometimes God don't come in a whirlwind. Sometimes He comes in a small voice. The Bible says here, but the Spirit, yeah. Pastor said, He said some powerful things yeah. on the night. We talked about building a foundation. Amen. And one thing that we know that God is building a solid foundation here, and it's building on the Word. And we got testament of that because Pastor had posted to where people in Africa, different places, is hearing our music, hearing our testimony, hearing the peace word, and they are being blessed by it. And then Brother Earl talked about he was building. Amen. Some battle was on, he was on a mission to build a wall. And no matter, and no matter how many times some battle came and told Nehemiah to come down, he said, We are not coming down off this right. wall. Right. He said, We got a job to do, yeah. we're on a mission, yeah. and no matter what we're gonna do it. So he sent another one. He sent us a messenger back again. Said, come, said, said, me, I'm, said somebody wants you to come down and go with me to a place called Old No. He said, you go back and tell me our Old No, we are not coming down. If we got to work with one hand and fight with the other one, we are not coming down off this wall because we're on a mission. See, like every time that you can let to do something from God, the enemy always bring distraction. You can be home Saturday playing and all of a sudden the telephone rang. Thank God for IT. When I got my phone on vibrate and I'm reading, I'm studying, I look down and I see the name and I said, not today. So, thanks. so when we're on the mission for God, then we got to do, amen, what God do. We thank God, amen, that we got a leader. Amen. That God has really used it. And I pray that God continue to bless them even as he ministered to those uh, places, the three places, amen, that he has to go to. Amen. So thank God that we are here holding down the fort, doing the things that God has called us, amen, to do. So we just thank God for the word, amen, of tonight. Thank God for Brother Brian, even on Sunday morning, amen, with an awesome message, amen, that that he brought, and then this Sunday night, Brother Earl brought an, uh, another message. Amen. We have to be on our post. 
Amen. Every weekend, I can't preach like Pastor. I can't preach like Brother Brian, nor Brother Earl, nor Brother Joe. Amen. But we have to do what God has called us to do. We will be effective in what God has called us to do. Amen. So we can't teach nobody but, but ourselves. Amen. So we just thank God. Amen. Again, I thank God for those of you that, amen, that pressed the way out today. Amen. Your faithfulness, amen, goes a long way. It's not what we do in his presence. It's what we do in his absence. Amen. That, that, that counts. Amen. So we're going to take up our offering. Amen. At this time.
know about God, but he's a healer. And he said it in his word. He said, by his stripes, amen, that we are healed. There may not be affliction of the righteous, but the Lord, amen, delivered them out of them all. The Bible says, once have I spoken it, once have I said it, twice have I spoken it, power, amen, belongs to God. And we know God got the power to heal no matter where you are right now. Amen. That God can go right where you are. Yeah. And God can touch you. Amen. And God, and God can heal you. And we're going to stand on that. And God's going to do just what God, amen, said we're going to do. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, we thank you for all that you have done, even on tonight, God. Remember every prayer request. God, every petition that has been before you on tonight, God. I pray that you go right where they are, that you will touch them, God. That you will heal them, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, by your strike, God, you said.